What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today. The RGB Bundle. This is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Three programs. These are the core foundational MAPS workout programs. Great. You follow them one after another. It's like nine months of exercise programming, okay? Free access. One of you will get free access to those programs. But you got to do this. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all of those things. And then if we pick your comment, we'll notify you. And you'll get free access to the RGB Bundle. Also... Huge sale this month. This is actually one of the biggest ones that I've ever seen. I love it. Uh, and I think you guys will as well. Check this out, right? It's called the Power Bundle. It includes Map Strong and Maps Power Lift. Okay. So Map Strong is a strength training program that we designed with Robert Oberst. He's a, a world's strongest man competitor. It's got some uh, you know, unorthodox lifts in there or unconventional lifts. It's good for strength and strength stamina. A lot of posterior chain training. That's the back and the glutes. Really fun program, one of our more popular ones. And then MAPS Powerlift is a straight-up powerlifting program. We designed that one with uh, Ben Pollock. He's a powerlifting competitor, also does bodybuilding. Very, very smart dude. Get both those programs together at retail. It would be $300, but right now you can get them both in this bundle for $79.99. Obviously, it's a massive discount. So if you're interested, head over to mapsmarch.com and get signed up. All right, here comes the show. Hey, woke people, stop trying to bring wokeism to fitness. It's not going to work. Oh, looking for a fight? Are they I still, love it. Yeah, like, what's the latest thing now? Oh, I'm going to read to you guys okay. some fun stuff, and then I'm going to explain why this wokeism Well, we is had not an episode happening. where we kind of covered some ideas that have infiltrated the, the fitness realm. Yeah, so, that, so, so you know, you guys know I got kicked off Instagram, so now I'm on Twitter. Apparently, Twitter is also... Hell, just like Instagram was, just, just a little <laughs> you, different, just you more didn't words. Know that? Oh, yeah, okay. it's just more okay. words. But anyway, there's somebody on there. Um, her Instagram handle is at fatty mph, and uh, you can't follow her unless she approves it. By the way, so I'm see if she'll let me follow her. But anyway, this is a post that she did. Okay, look her up. And it Wait says it says this: fatty mp. That's what it is. Fatty mph. Oh, mph. So it says here uh, miles per hour. I have no idea <laughs> how many <laughs> fat, how many fatty per hour can is you that, do? Yeah. So so listen to this, and this is uh, this is a quite infuriating. Uh, but you know, I, I I get irritated by it. But to be quite honest, it's not going to work. Oh, you must case. be blocked by her then. Why? Because I can look at her. Really? Yeah, I can look at her page. No way. Yeah, that means, I have that means you're blocked. I've already got warnings, dude. Uh, wow. That's crazy. She's on to you. That happened quickly, huh? Yeah. That's impressive. All right. So check out what this post says. It says. Periodic reminder that treating and preventing obesity actually means trying to conversion therapy fat people into becoming thin people despite zero evidence this is even remotely possible. <laughs> I know, it's so stupid. So, so if you're obese, you should just give up? Well, you know, what, the thought? You know what makes me upset about Don't this? Don't try. It, well, well here's, here's why I like to say it's not going to work, right? The fitness industry is different than other industries in that most people or many of the people that work in this space – who genuinely work in the space, genuinely want to help people through fitness, through exercise, through proper nutrition, through developing a better relationship with food and their bodies and exercise. We, at one point, were all, you know, quote unquote, out of shape or overweight or unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And fitness is what got us uh, to kind of where we're at in terms of our health um, and our, our physiques and whatever. And it's also what makes us such uh, strong proponents of it. So in other words, the fitness industry is made up of empowered people, self-empowered people who have thrown away the victim mentality, yeah. right? Because the only way you can succeed, if you do have a big weight loss goal, for example, the only way you can succeed long-term is to take the victim mentality and dispose of it because at some point you have to accept what you can't change and you have to focus on what you can change. Yeah. That's the only way to progress and if you do this long enough, you figure that out. And so somebody coming in and saying something like that to people like us, yeah. it just, it doesn't, it's not going to work. Yeah, it do, doesn't resonate at all. I no. mean, it's, it's about personal growth and, and really that's the whole fitness journey is, you know, discovering who you are through, um, you know, these encounters, these, these, um, uh, you know, this environment where you're able to work on hard 
um, hard things in, in order to get stronger, get better and get a better understanding of, you know, what's going to benefit your body versus, you know, just sort of taking on the world. Yep, do, you totally. th do you think these messages start from a good place and then they kind of morph into this like just extreme example of it? Like, I really, I want to believe that what the, this pushback that you're getting right of the fat phobia deal is because the fitness space has failed obese people for so long. Um, Cause I, I know the angle, the statistics like, right. That she's trying to, to point towards is that, that, you know, only, you know, 20% of the people have any success of that 20%, 15% of that, them end up putting all that weight back on after two or three years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all these methods of yeah. how we lose weight or try and fix obesity has continually failed for years. So Which has been a big criticism that we've shared. You right. Know, and totally. We brought that up. Totally. But, I, so, but do, do you, so do you believe that this messaging is, is coming from initially a good place and then it's kind of morphed into this no, extreme version of it? Not no, at all. You I think, think it's like a, it's I, a gas, gas lighting, right? right, right because it exists in other spaces. It's, it's the same philosophy applied to anything where the, the, the message is, Hey, it's not your fault. In fact, it's everyone else's <laughs> fault. Uh, you're a victim. Don't do anything about it. And it's all good. And that, that you see that permeating a lot of spaces. It's the same message just applied now to the fitness space. Where I think it comes from a good place are people within our space that are say saying this message, but in a better way. People in our space are saying things like, hey, look, you know, restricting diets don't necessarily work, or you have to love your body in order to have long-term success. And love doesn't mean uh, you know, where you just, uh, this is my body, I'm going to do whatever I want, but rather I'm going to take care of myself like from the truest yeah. sense, right? It's about healthy application of exercise, that over-exercise or over-restriction or over-dieting. That message is coming from within the fitness space, and although it's a minority, it's still getting it's getting louder. We're one of those uh, yeah. those people in that space that says that. So, but this is not coming from a good place. This is coming from a this is a an ideology that is trying its hardest. And you know, I under I know why they're trying to come after the fitness space. I'll tell you right now, P because fitness is empowering. It yeah. is it is counter. Because you think for yourself. It is counter this bullshit. It yeah. is one hundred percent counter. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you see any movement based based off of victimhood and you know follow along and listen to everyone else and you're not in charge of yourself or whatever if you ever listen you'll always find the fitness space will be the most resistant oh always. i feel like that's not why i feel like we're they're coming after us because we're we're the easiest target we're a bunch of narcissistic vain you know fucking turds <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, so we're like an easy layup for I someone think, like you know that. what's it's funny like, i think that, uh, and a lot of because uh, of a lot of bad experiences out and there and the, that people uh, share let, let's be let's be honest here okay uh just go back five ten years not even that long ago um, the people that we we idolize in the fitness space or that were head, uh, held up as the authority just are not good examples. Yes, most of them are broken inside. They've got all kinds of issues and addictions and but that's obsessions. Skewed, but and, that's what's skewed. So think about it this way. Think of all the people you know in the fitness space personally. Vast majority of them are not like that. Mm -hmm. We're talking. What you're talking about are the. Uh, the insta celebrities. I, no, I don't. I don't agree with that. I you think, think most of the people you know in fitness are well, narcissistic. Well, I mean, I know. I like to think the people that I surround myself with are good people, and I've weeded out a lot of those people in my life. But I think a vast majority of the fitness space is broken, and I and I think it's a spectrum. What I, the example I'm giving right now is an extreme. The ones that have been highlighted and put yeah. up on a pedestal and have a lot of fame and attention because of whatever vain reason. But I I do think that. A, a, a vast majority of the fitness space is still very broken. I think that there's a lot of things to be fixed. That's why we started uh, the podcast. But if you consider the whole fitness space, which includes people that work in gyms, trainers, coaches, people that help people with nutrition, people who work out consistently, who take care of themselves consistently, then you'll see that a majority of the people I, I would are, say, are great. Okay, it's, so, it, what it is is it's the small so you, percentage that are fitness if you media. Bring it, if, you, if you bring in the, the health and wellness portion of our space and you include that in the conversation they help balance that out right the the and i and i you know i've teased that space before the you know hippie crunchy side but i think that they have a much better approach they've been preaching the message of love yourself and and take care of yourself yeah. like they've been preaching that for long before we were 
and I think they help balance our our space out. I think for a very long time, the you know six pack abs, muscles, you know, you know fake body parts, but they're the injections, ones that get the attention. They're not the majority. I, I get what you're saying. They're the ones getting the attention. Okay, so okay, fine. They're, you can make the case they're a minority, but they're moving the majority. They're, they're the speaking ones. to the majority. Yes. So it's the media. Yes. So you can Agreed. make you could you could you know I'll concede that maybe there is uh you know. Fewer, not much fewer, though, in the entire space, but they are the loudest voice or the most powerful voice, and they have been for d several decades that now. I agree, that I agree with. I think the, the popular fitness media is garbage. But when you meet people who work in fitness, when I meet with trainers, when I meet with coaches, when I meet with gym owners, the intentions are typically very good. People are very growth-minded. They're very accepting of people who want to help themselves, who come into their gyms, who are obese, who need whatever. We talked about this, right? The yeah. gym is a very mm -hmm. accepting place, which is counter to what someone like this would say, which is the gym is the most judgmental place in the world, which is not true. So, yeah, I, I agree with that, that there are the, the, the influencers, the fitness media people. That's for sure garbage. I think that's true for a lot of spaces, though. But generally speaking, it's a, it's a, it's a great space and very empowered. People take their health into their own hands. And most people who work in fitness, I mean, everyday people who work in fitness, uh, dealt with this themselves at some point. They overcame these struggles themselves. So trying to hit them with this message, good luck. It's not going to work. You, you tell this to a trainer or someone who lost 50 pounds 10 years ago, who now figured out how to keep it off and take care of themselves, you tell them this message, they're going to laugh at you in your face. Like, well, what, are you what does the message promote? Like, I just, uh, like, do they even think It's about not trying to promote anything. It's literally trying to take down. It's exactly. trying to tear down. Exactly. And, this and is revenge culture. That's how I feel. So yeah, I we're, think we're it, in the revenge of everything. Like, like, it doesn't matter. There's no forgiveness. Everybody wants to take everybody out if they have a difference of opinion. And it's it's all about revenge and getting self gratification. That, for it. That's what I picture is has happened is like I think that the, like this this example you this girl you're giving her, I, I briefly went through her page and kind of seen the, the stuff and by the way she's supposedly an educator. Oh, um, Lord, that's scary, <laughs> right? That is scary. And and so what I think so she's probably she's educated probably and fairly intelligent and I think that she she arms herself with that and she's probably been hurt by somebody in our space who is superficial and vain and probably turned her off or hurt her in a way, whether it be emotionally or physically or metabolically or done something, and she is on a war path to tear down anyone and everyone that yeah. fits in that category. And unfortunately for us, a, a big portion of our space can be can be cattled into that category. It could be, or it could be that nobody in our she space hurt her. a hug, I guess. It could be nobody in our space hurt her, something else hurt her. She's got body image issues. And That's fair. this is the easy target. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that guy, we all know that guy, who had a terrible girlfriend, cheated on him, did something terrible, and after that, he's like, I hate women. And all he does now is he looks at him as objects, and yeah. he just, I'm not going to ever- man, like, yeah, like yeah. women hating groups. Yes, or he had a terrible relationship with his mom, and this is how he develops. And you see sometimes with women, too. This is what it reminds me of. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious. It's angry. It's vitriolic. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody. That's the biggest point. Because that... if, you're if you're reading that, and you're in this position, I, I try to put myself in that person, in a person's shoes who- Maybe she's reaching, right? Like, so I'm mm -hmm. overweight. Mm -hmm. I've struggled with this my whole life. Oh boy, it's been hard. I've gained it and lost it. You know, I got teased for it maybe in school, feel very insecure. It's a tough position to be in. This is, by the way, why we all started working out here. Our the, the host of this podcast dealt with this ourselves. But I imagine this person who's just can't figure it out, is angry, is frustrated, reads this, is like, yes, never going to work out again. Yeah. Yes, eat whatever I want. This is what I need to do. And you know what, who you knows fault it is? It's the fitness industry's fault. It's trainers <laughs> faults. It's gyms faults. They're fat shaming me. Yeah. This is, you know, this is, I'm a victim of their oppression. What a terrible, terrible, stupid message, but also good luck. Good luck trying to permeate the fitness industry. This is one of the most, and I mean the, the genuine fitness industry, the people actually work with people, not the media, you know, people, the celebrities, but rather the trainers and coaches that work with people. Good luck trying to sell that message to them. It's not going to work. There's, there's some of the most empowered people, at least in this regard, that you'll ever find. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we're also, and I think I'm a bit jaded because I know we are in the middle of one. We're in this, you know, social media space. It's relatively new. 
um, the a lot of these the, probably the wrong people got a lot of the fame and attention uh, early on. Yep. I like to think that we're part of the movement, to the, some of the cream that will rise to the top, and I think we're seeing that. I think more and more of the better voices, the better information. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's when I see something like this, like I, I'm not the type of person that would want to cancel her or, you know, at, at all shut her down. It's like, dude, better, better, better ideas win. That's yeah, all. that's right. Better yeah. ideas, better conversations will, will silence somebody yeah. like this because eventually those people that, you know, are, are banding together or agreeing with her still have a ton of work they got to do on themselves. And then mm -hmm. eventually if they do want to grow, improve uh -huh. and change their life for the better, they will ev eventually have to seek out the truth and the shit that she's spewing is not the truth. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I, there was another article I read. It's like lifting weights. Why lifting weights is toxic masculinity. Oh my god, bro! <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Speaking of which, here's some uh, good yeah, yeah, countering yeah. news, right? Our strong women deadlift thing that we started. You know, how oh, many, how yeah. many months ago did we start? A that? year. It's, it's, it's a year anniversary. It's been a year. Okay. We started. So March is uh, officially. Is it Women's Month? Is that what the, the how they say it? Is it? I don't want to be wrong. Here. I'll look it up. I believe it. I believe it's Women's Month or Empowering Women Month. I don't okay. know. I don't know the actual title of what they call March, but we started that last year as a cool way to highlight some of the women in our community mm -hmm. um, that are that are empowering them around strength. strength. It's not about their body. It's not about yeah. the way they look it's yeah. not about it's how about light the they are how heavy stuff. they are it's yeah. about being a strong Put woman work in. women's history month well women's history month yeah. so and and during and then we we dropped a sweater last year that had a, a quote of margaret thatcher and i believe that uh katrina and Chokey and savannah are working on some cool stuff that will come out this month every month we do this we don't talk about it on the show but every month oh i love what people send in. we give we give away 500 dollars to uh, one person i know it's not a t crazy amount of money but if you, all you have to do is post a video of yourself you know deadlifting squatting doing one of the compound lifts in one of our programs and hashtag Strong women deadlift, and you will see. It's, strong, it's hashtag strong women deadlift challenge. Oh, sorry, I missed the challenge part. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, strong women deadlift challenge, and uh, every month, uh, Chokey and Savannah pick somebody on there. I believe this month, because it's Women's History Month, every week they're going to be giving something away. So if you are, are if you get on that right away, you start using the hashtag mm -hmm. and posting videos of you deadlifting, and then the hashtag that we're going to every week pick a random person, give away like some of the apparel. And then, of course, at the end of the month, we will pick uh, a single winner, and they will win the five. Yeah, so was, uh, my one of my favorite videos it was a, a woman deadlifting, and she looked like she was third trimester of pregnancy, oh, wow. and she uh, was pulling some good weight. My off favorite the was the, it was the so good. I think it was the very first one we did, the very first or second one that we gave away, where uh, the the lady was lifting in her garage, and after she, oh, she hit like a PR, run, she hit like a PR, through. yeah, and then she was like celebrate, and then you also need out of the car, you see the little kid come running oh, in, oh yeah, that like was cele a great one. celebrate with her mom and give her yeah, mom a big hug. That, that is so good. Yeah, that's really really yeah, cool. I really like that. Speaking of of, of women and girls, uh, Justin, I want to hear. Um, I, you're making quite the impact at the high school that you're you're. Strength Se training with the football to, team seems to be yeah, and is it it's spreading? You were telling me this morning it's spreading now. The other teams want some strength training. Yeah, coaching. no, so that was cool. I, um, I got are you to, moonlining on us? I, yeah, I'm not trying to, huh? dude. I was like, <laughs> literally, my my entire intention with with this whole thing was to just um, keep the program alive. It was like on its way out, like it mm. was spiraling to almost not even to exist anymore at the school. And so I just, I wanted it to still exist for my kids when they get old enough to like play football. And it's just, there's a lot of history there at the school. And so I just noticed right away throughout the season, I was like, we just didn't have adequate time to really establish a really good training program and protocol for these kids to, to, to build and develop strength, stability and support going into season. So we don't have as many injuries. And so anyways, I guess word's been getting out a bit amongst, um, so the athletic director, he works with me uh, with the workouts and he kind of runs on the days I'm not there, which is awesome. And so he's been really helpful with that. And I guess he's been talking with, um, you know, some of the parents and I've been able to meet a few of them. And I guess the girls soccer team just got a brand new coach who was like a professional soccer player. And, uh, and she's kind of taking this on. She has two sons that are in the workouts with me and was really uh, stoked to, to see the, what I was incorporating in there with isometrics wow, that's so cool. and all these things. And she was like, you know, I just, I just look around and I'm noticing with my, you know, girl athletes, just, 
you know, the need uh, for strength training and just the, yes. the just the education behind it and the even nutrition. And so it's like, there's just- Are you going to do it? Lacking. And so I told her, I'm, like, I'm going to help you any way I can. Like in terms of like, if I have time, like I'm going to try and, you know, adjust and draw something up. Obviously it's not going to look exactly the same as what I put together for the football team, but, you know, we can adjust some things and she- we're going to try and work it out where we can kind of share time with the, the weight room where I go up to the field and then the girls, you know, hopefully we get enough of them to, to get behind it and they can kind of work out with her there uh, and, and kind of start building up uh, the student athletes, uh, you know, in the, at the school. Dude, and that is so, so rad. Yeah. Strength training for when it comes to sports, kids sports, it's always important. But for, for girls, I think it's more important. Yeah. If you, have you guys seen the statistics on ACL tears in girls versus boys? No, I don't think so. Uh, uh, something like 75% higher rate, something like that. So in girls? In girls and boys. Interesting. And it has to do with the hip, uh, the hip, the hip angle, gate. right? Yeah. Because the hip to knee angle is, is stronger in girls than in boys, obviously because girls have uh, wider hips in relation to their, their waist. Mm -hmm. And that angle in combination with sprinting and stopping and stuff like that, yeah, it causes more torque or more, more pressure, puts more pressure on the ligaments of the knee. So you see, and maybe Doug, you can look this up, ACL tears That's in so girls versus boys. That's so interesting. I don't boys. think I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah I've read that. Oh, it, and, and it's strength training can solve it. Yeah. If you strength train properly, you're gonna, you'll are gonna you solve that issue. But what happens, a lot of these girls go into these sports, don't do any strength training. Then they go through puberty. The hips start to, to become a little wider. They get the angle gets stronger. They're, they're getting stronger as they're training. Huh. They don't do correctional well, well, exercise. Stress on ligaments. Yes, and they're the those tears. Well, are like, maybe it's seventy five percent more. Huh? That's what I remember reading a that's long a, time a, ago. That's a big it's, number. Oh wow! According to research, an ACL tear is one acute injury that female athletes are two to eight times wow. more likely to experience than males. Mm. That's a big range. Two to eight. Yeah, two. To, well, still, that's big. Yeah, you know, yeah. Two no, to no, eight. I mean, yeah, that's way, way big. That's a that's a big. Yeah, that's a lot. I, so I mean, I said less than that. At least double. Right? Yeah, at least double. Yeah, right? that's us two hundred to eight hundred times. Uh, wait, wow. Percent. Sorry. Percent. More yeah, likely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. Right. So strength training. I used to tell my, my clients this whenever they had kids in sports. Um, I almost feel like there is a, a business right there. Right. Just just somebody who like specialize in just in, addressing that. Yeah. Like think about that. I don't know if you're a fitness person listening. Like talk about a, a underserved market. The cool. one, the fact that I was unfamiliar with mm -hmm. that statistic, how powerful that is to to help female athletes yes. that are doing that. Like, yeah. uh, and we all, you know, the reason why that comes to mind. I know you have your call today with uh, NCI coaching and trainers, and yep. like part of what we coach them with is helping them with business, like stuff like this. I mean, I've been in this for twenty years, and there's always situations that, that like like this happen that reveal themselves. Like, yeah. what an opportunity! Yeah, imagine there's such call, a need there. Imagine right. calling yourself the ACL I've, coach. Right. Yeah, I've literally talked about this a couple times on on those calls because of the, I just, it's so visibly obvious. Like there's such a need for, you know, qualified trainers to get involved in these student athlete programs. They're just still running off of really old information. Yep. If, if any at all, mm -hmm. like literally just a lot of times it's volunteers that are coming in to just you know, like sort of manage and then run some drills. But you know, there's no real like thought that, that goes into a lot of the program. Yeah. When I was training, a small percentage of my clients were um, athletes. And I think that's normal for most trainers. I think when you're a trainer, you think you're going to have all these <laughs> you athletes. Think, I think every trainer gets, I'm going to train all these athletes. If, especially if you have an athletic background. Like yeah. that was like, I think my goal was to work for a professional team at one time. Yeah. And then I was hoping or thought I would get like a bunch of like athletic no, clients. Yeah, that's not, not happening at yeah, all. Yeah. Your clients are usually people in their 40s and 50s with expendable income who, you know, who want to get in better shape. But anyway, nonetheless, after a while, they would bring me their kids, and that's when you would see I would start training young athletes. Mm -hmm. And I'd say eh, maybe five percent of my clients over twenty years probably were made up of young athletes. If I did train somebody under the age of, let's say, twenty or eighteen, it was usually an athlete, right? Young athlete. And so I would train boys and girls because parents would bring me their kids. And I'd love to hear you guys' experience because my experience was that the female athletes, especially the young ones, especially when they would bring me the, the under sixteen year old athletes. The female athletes were so serious. Way better. You too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, way, way better. I, there's stuff that uh, I think supports it. I think girls, one, are just uh, better with uh, taking guidance. Uh, yeah. and their, their attention they're deficit. Better at that's, true, that's true they're, for men, they're, for they're, sure. Their, their not, attention, yeah, you know, yeah. to detail and stuff like that. Like It's like they're, I think that, I think women in general, period, are easier and better clients. Yeah. yeah. I just, and so, and then I think it, I think it's just exaggerated. Uh, at the you know, I I've talked about on the show before that I I did not like training kids. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the reason why I didn't was because most of the kids that I trained under the age of 18, so I'm not talking about like a 17 year old or 16 year old. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like 12, 13, yeah. 10, like yeah. at that age, especially boys, they're just, they're so distracted and so uninterested in what you're trying to have them do. Many times it was the, the parents trying to live yep. their dreams through their kid and they yep. want to make them a super athlete or they know that they're really out of shape and then that they're trying to get them to lose weight. It's like yeah. the kid doesn't even, kid want, to doesn't even there. want to be there. Oh yeah. 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 So but yeah, the girls on the other hand, girls were a, like more interested in detail. Totally. And yeah. So yeah, I know with, with the boys that my strategy turned into, cause at one point I was getting, I had one and then I started getting referrals. And so at one point I had like five clients that were these younger athletes and the boys the way that I got them to be consistent or, or have good workouts was I had to joke around with them and make it fun. So they'd yeah, show up and trick them. Yeah. Oh no, we just have fun. And I'd, you know, curls for the girls. I'd yell real loud in the gym or what's up, man. What's up, bro. I'd make an announcement on the intercom and just make it funny. Yeah. And then the guys would enjoy it. The girls business, they'd come in, they'd bring me their, their, they would have like a, this one girl I remember training her. She's like 13 years old. She had like a notebook. These are all the exercises I did, Sal. Here's how much weight I did. And I'd, okay, we're going to do this extra. She'd do it and she'd sit down. She'd be like, okay, are we ready? And I'd be like, no, 10 more seconds. And, yeah. then we'll, and I remember Trey was like such a joy training this kid because she was so, you know, consistent about it. She ended up going to, uh, you know, getting a, a full ride to play soccer. But it's, it's a, it was it was a lot of fun in that sense, but definitely challenging. Kids yeah. are way more challenging to train. Oh, yeah. It's than, been an experience for me so far, and it's totally like I'm way more vocal, you know, because it's a group of, of high school boys, too, you know, and it's the attention span. But really, it's like, let's get to the business, you know, and like because otherwise they're just going to, you know mess around and, and do <laughs> yeah, stupid yeah. stuff if I don't like completely captivate them at every minute, every hour, you know? How, how are they with, so um, what are the boundaries like now as a coach? Like, I mean, back when I was a kid. There like, were no boundaries, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a what coach, say, a coach could, could launch say? you against the locker, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Throw a helmet at you. He was definitely, he could, he swore at us all yeah. the time. Like, are they like, do they kind of oversee you on a lot of that stuff? Like hardcore? I know you're not slamming any kids no, in the No, I don't do any of that. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I check are, are myself. You? Should I not, ask that? Yeah, not not to like swear or nothing, but I, I mean, I caught myself doing that when we were more out in the field during the season because you just get in the passion of it and you're just like, oh, fuck, you know, like, and so I would catch myself like getting in the heat of the moment with that. But when I'm teaching them things, like when, when I'm in trainer mode, it literally is like professional, yeah. professional version of myself. Yeah. So it's not even a big deal. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've, Again, we're all like human beings, and so I'm, I'm there with like some of the other coaches, and sometimes you know it gets Dude. a little, you know, old school. Let's yeah. just say <laughs> it's uh, so it different. Teach, teach kids a lesson sometimes. You know what? Every generation gets less and less that way, right? Because yeah. like my dad's generation, forget. I hear stories about you know that was, but even our. our so yesterday I was at the Apple Store with my kid because he needed uh, he, we needed to get, upgrade his phone, and we're there, and there was some problem. I mean, I was an easy customer. Oh, oh yeah, we'll get that one. I'll pay for it. Done deal. Anyway. The kid working at the Apple store contacts our service carrier and it went through on our end, didn't go through on their end. He's on the phone with them. They transform like five. Anyway, I'm waiting for like two and a half hours just sitting there listening to this kid get the runaround and I could feel my my frustration and anger level just, <laughs> you know, you start to feel it rise and I'm like, yeah. oh. but I got my son there and I want to be a good example. Plus I'm in a store. So I'm just like, uh. finally I lost it. And I said, hey, can I talk to the guy on the phone? And I give it to him over the phone. Anyway, I get it fixed right away, right? My son starts cracking up. He goes, oh, I heard your closer voice coming out. That's what he said. I don't know why he said closer voice. I heard, he goes, I heard your closer your angry voice. angry voice or closer voice. He's like, voice, man, huh? you got really mad. And now the thing is, I did not get that mad. <laughs> he thought I did. Yeah. So he's, I'm laughing. He goes, why are you laughing? I said, you think that was me going off? He goes, why? Have you gone off harder than that? Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm like sure. thinking back and I'm like. I was just being stern. Dude, you talk about back in the day. I'm like, man, I remember when I first, back in the day when we managed gyms, the sales meetings, they were bad. they were an HR nightmare, okay? Oh, yeah. And I, re I remember like th throwing desks, you know, and you know, launching people out of the office. And I'd tell my son this, and he's like, how did you guys do this? Yeah. I'm like, it was different back then. It was way different. I remember, do you guys remember this? When you make when a, a sales guy made his first sale, they'd cut your tie off? Yeah. yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. All the shit that we did? It, yeah. it was bad, dude. So we had that conversation. <laughs> I mean, you have to know that I, that was, I was like the extreme of that, right? I mean. Oh, oh uh, I think I mean, you, I, both of us were. <laughs> imagine I'm where sure. I'm at. Like, I'm that guy for us now, and I'm very, No, very, you are way very, tamed. I don't yeah, know what it was way, like way, way tamed. Bro. Like, but it's so... <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I have to, I, a lot of times I have to check that right before I have to remember like, man, people just are not, 
they don't have the same kind of thick skin as like we uh, we did. No. And I know, like you said, every generation says that, but I've had to really try and tone that down. Like uh, just, I, I don't know. I, I've always appreciated people that are, are blunt and direct and yeah. candid. Like I just, uh, I like that. I would always rather have that than somebody sugarcoat something or, you know, yep. Yep. piss down my back and tell me it's raining. I'd rather get bad news that I don't want to hear, but it's what is the truth. So than like, you know, <laughs> gray shit, you know what I'm saying? So I've just, I, I've always operated from that place. And it's just some people are not prepared for, for that all the time. But I tell you, it's like, uh, it, it's hard to do it sometimes, but I always, um, it has, it has to be effective is the thing. It's very, and, very and the effective. Key, the thing is it was effective before. If you do it today to this, to a younger generation today, it's no longer effective yeah. because they're immediately- You got to read your crowd. Yeah. And they're immediately offended and all that stuff. And I get it. So it's, you have to change your approach. Well, some kids can handle it and then you kind yeah. of navigate to those. Again, it's it's an individual thing now. Even when you're in a group setting, you're still kind of reading Dude. around to see who needs like a specific kind of motivation, you know, versus the other. And I'll pull the ones aside usually that I want to like hammer. I remember the first time that Katrina heard me- uh, managing one of our millennial employees and she heard me talking to them for the first time. She was like, who the fuck was that? I yeah. get off the phone yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I tell her who it was. You had like, sex right away, didn't you? <laughs> no, she was not, she was not turned on. She was actually giving me shit because oh. of how, how soft oh, I was. You're, you put your gloves she on. Goes, oh, she goes, what was gloves. that bullshit? Yeah. Like, what was that coddling and this going back and oh, forth? And I, I could tell you were full of shit and you weren't telling that. I'm just like, I had to, honey. I mean, you got to kind of slowly bring it to that. She's like, oh my, I wish you would talk Dude, to me like that. My first, my first, <laughs> No, she doesn't. Yeah, she did say that. She goes, <laughs> I wish you would handle me like this. Dude, I had, I, dude. I said, no, you don't. My you first, keep it real to you, honey. My first mentor who I ended up going into business with at one, at one point. I mean, I'm an 18-year-old kid. I'm very aggressive. I'm like, I want to succeed in this, in this gym industry. And I remember one day we were, he had the sales meeting and I was a very talented kid and I could get away with not doing shit that other people had to do. And I remember I came in the meeting. I had just broke all these records. So my ego is like the size of the room, right? So I'm sitting in there in this meeting, you know. And remember back then we had planners yeah, yeah. that we had to write in? So he's like, uh, and he, he, was, he would pick on me because he knew that I could be much better, right? Yeah. So he'd be like, Sal, let me see your planner. And I knew I didn't feel shit out. I didn't do anything in my planner. So I, I said, well, I, I don't, it's at my desk. He's go get it. So I get it. I bring it back. He lifts it and he opens it in front of everybody. It's blank. He tears it in half and he, Hits his hands and he gets in my face. You call yourself a fucking closer? I'll show you. And he hammered me. And you yeah. know what it did? Made me. I got so fired up, dude. Yeah. And yeah. we crushed. Yeah. And you could not do that. If I did that to somebody now, dude, <laughs> they know, would cry. Single you know? them out yeah, and punk them. Yeah. But I loved it. You know, he got in my face. And at first I was angry. And then I got out of there. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to show him. You know? Now, do you think, okay, so do you think that, because uh, we, we talk about how every generation rebels against the yeah. original generation. Do you think that the Generation Z that's coming up now is actually going to seek that and actually they want that a little bit? Like the the, the generation below us, right? Is I think that they're... I, they're, I think it's in cycles. I, I would think that somewhat. Yeah, somewhat. You can't tell me there's not there's not young men and women right now that love the competitive edge, recognize that they like to be pushed, and they know that they you they see know that in the they know their own bullshit. They know yeah. when they're selling their own bullshit to themselves, and they appreciate being called out on it. Like you can't tell me that that's like you know what makes doesn't me, exist anymore. Well, you know what makes yeah. me think that I don't know if it'll if it'll swing back and like to exactly how we were, but I, it, there is a bit of a swing back like. You ever listen to these kids talk to talk shit to each other while playing video games? Yeah. Or you look at the memes and the and the humor they have. Yeah. It's dark and it's it's ridiculous and it's you know bad or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a little bit of that. I don't know if it's exactly the same though. I don't know if the aggressive. I think every time it swings back, it gets modified a little bit. Maybe. Right. Yeah. I mean, we see this even like in sports, like how coaches have evolved and changed over years. Like you know, we we just came out of a generation of like the the it became really popular to you know get what are called players coaches. Like that didn't exist mm. uh, thirty years ago. What the what the fuck was a players coach? A coach was a coach, right? But now they they have a term called like players coach, and they're coaches that are kind of befriend you and they they kind of work a different angle, right? It's like mm. they get close to you and they get connected with oh, you, and they and then they use that they use that as their leverage to be able to guide you in the direction you want. 
and and that and, it, and and it's gone very extreme that way. So extreme that some coaches get kind of walked all over by some players because they don't have that stern side to them because they're more of a players coach and they work more from a oh, friend type of angle. I and I I think that every once in a while you start to see like and more recently than not some of these coaches start to emerge that are a little more old school again. Yeah. And so I do think that the this kind of new generation that's coming up still I think they seek a little bit of that. And I think it'll be modified. I think it'll be uh, a, a, a kind of a player's coach mentality. What was that? Hoosiers coach? Oh, oh God. Freaking uh, Bob Knight. The, Bob Knight. Yeah, Bobby Knight. That guy was like the That's epitome a whole of like a yes. hard ass. You There's know a what? There's great though? documentary on I, him on, I, maybe it's Netflix. If it's not Netflix, it's Amazon, I think. You know really what? I think it's in relation to how hard actual life is. Like if you grew up. During the Great Depression, that's a very or good point. Two. That's a very good so point, and we have a lot day to day of just, life is hard as yes, shit. Yes, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, think it, I think if life got real hard again, then, which it will, goes in cycles. Then it would or, resonate. Right? There's a lot. Resonate. There's a lot of people that I mean, we, when we talked to Tony Robbins, he was saying that we are in the middle of good times right now. Yeah, we are. We are. We are in the middle of this. This. These. This great. You know, economic run that we've been on for a long time mm -hmm. with, with the convenience that we have everything delivered to us. People. You know, the the poor class today has more things than the rich did a hundred years ago. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're at a, like the grand scheme of things. We're at some of the best times and unfortunately probably harder times are coming and then you're you're that's probably a very good point like you, we will probably see the rise of that kind of way of of handling each other more when it's required because it's like hey shit's scary out there yeah. right now yeah. i can't send you out in the real world to, and, to debate you on whatever well, ideas yeah. you have Let, let's get this shit done i remember talking to i don't remember who it was it, it might have been a, a priest i was at a baptism and i think it was a priest one of the priests there and we were talking about the crucifix that you see in the Catholic churches. And I said, yeah, you know, I said, I noticed that in some Catholic churches, the crucifix has a depiction of, of Jesus and he's, you know, you could see him being tortured or whatever. Others just have a cross. And he goes, the, the more, the poorer the countries, the more gruesome and, mm. and, and detailed the crucifix is, the wealthier the countries, you tend to see just the cross. Oh, that's and I said, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in this, country it's poor country and you're struggling right you're gonna you, they, they relate more to that yeah wow that's image really hard of struggle, right Versus yeah. in your wealthy country you see that like oh that's kind of you know that's hard to look at oh that's that interesting there. yeah i did so, not know that it was an interesting you know take that i speaking of gen z by the way there was this article i read uh i guess there was this paper written i got a, by this military recruiter talking about um how this this they call this the nintendo generation but they obviously screwed up because nintendo was our generation yeah but they're saying it was a military press release that's what it was. And it announced that Generation Z is at more risk for injuries in boot camp because their skeletons are weak. <laughs> 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 it says that this this soldier skeleton That's the ultimate insult right there. <laughs> it says this this soldier skeleton is not toughened by activity prior to arrival. So some of them break uh, more easily. I thought you were gonna say like they they have Nintendo thumbs, so they're bad at like shooting no. or something. No, and they're talking about how they just they, they show up and they're just they don't ha they don't have a lot of hard physical activity. Well, isn't this part of our our we've talked about this before, right? The fear Frail, uh, and, and consequences of us not doing hard physical labor yep. and shit anymore, like that we you have, have to schedule it. Otherwise, you're not gonna get it. Yeah, yeah, and so, so it makes perfect sense. Now what? Okay, now what are they? Uh, are they seeing an increase in injuries? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Is it like a, is in it tears pretty, and bone breaking and stuff. Is like it that. like a like a dramatic? There was like one point five percent more. It didn't say, but uh, it was an okay. actual press release. So they actually said it and said, "Hey, you know, these kids are showing up and getting Interesting. hurt in boot camp." So it, it, I mean, that makes sense. It's just you're you're, you're just less physical, uh, of course. Kids today, the way they connect now is through technology. When we were kids, you didn't. Connect the interesting technology. part, though, is that you're seeing that in a in the young generation and already seeing that right now. And it's like kids are typically resilient. So, I mean, we've predicted on the show, and I don't think it's completely happened yet, but we're starting to, which is, um, I, I think one of the biggest things we're going to hear as far as conversations is around children's posture. Yeah. You know, low back oh, pain, yeah. knee pain. That's gone up significantly. Pain. Accelerated after the pandemic. Yes. You, you yeah. know that neck, neck and back pain were almost non-existent in people under the age of 18. And it now. hasn't, and it hasn't become like a, like a national conversation, but I think it will be. Yeah. I, agree. I think as, as, as it, it gets, cause it's, it's going to get worse. Gets string a sentence together. It's going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> just, it's, 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 it's just throwing jabs today, dude. He's like, Bam! 
Damn. Shit, Justin woke up with violence. It's, it's, it's like a, <laughs> you know, Justin. We're going to fuck up today, guy. He's the old, he's a, uh, what's the, uh, I'm crotching the, the, He's like, he's Clint Eastwood in terms no, of the Grand no, Reno. Not, not the racist the, part, the, but the, the angry Archie, part. Archie Bunker. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you know, get that, off my lawn. Don't shade on me. <laughs> I'll kick your ass, you know. Yeah. I Hilarious. actually saw that, I follow that, um, is it Rad Dad that does that? Oh, I don't know. They had a skit of a, a, a dad. You guys had to have seen it. It was just recent. It was the other day he posted. You guys follow Rad Dad? I know no, you guys, I don't. Yes, you do. You follow, right? I follow Rad Okay, he, they had a little skit, and it was a it was a uh, it was a skit of uh, someone using his driveway, like a, da- a dad with someone pulling his driveway. <laughs> oh, to make a <laughs> turn? Say, yeah, yeah, just to turn around. You know, it was like that's some, such a dad thing. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah, he's standing out on his porch, and what he's like watching doing? this kid like back in, and he, the kid's like on his phone trying to figure out he lost directions. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's like a long drive with dad's like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sprinting down there and his like his new balances and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then he oh, throws the kid I, out of the know, car. The dad, you stay off my property, bro, bro, bro. You tell your friends. The dad stereotypes. <laughs> yeah. I hate them because they're true. They you know, are the yeah. sneezing, the, the checking the thermostat all the time. Uh, the, you know that kind of. Oh, it's the so what, the part that I think is interesting, and ever I'm pretty sure every dad can relate to this, is that how it it subtly creeps in. I mean, we were just on a walk right now, right? Just before we started this podcast, and. I'm venting about stupid stuff, right? Like husband and wife shit. I'm like, God damn, do I sound like a freaking grouchy old dad? Being <laughs> a grouchy old miser dad. You say like, how silly is that? But- it's funny because like, I know when I start like getting all angsty like that, it's because like there's some underlying pain, right? Yeah. Like, I, like I've been having like back pain. So <laughs> I know oh, that's where this is coming I from. I thought you meant emotional pain. <laughs> <laughs> that's not physical, <laughs> yeah, physical pain, dude. That's hilarious. Yeah, so I'm always a little more like, dude. I got it. I got something for you, Justin. We haven't talked about this on the podcast. Did you guys hear about? I can't. I got to look this this guy up. So uh, this is tied to the Epstein deal. Oh boy! Okay. Oh. Did you guys hear about? Wait, wait did somebody follow-ups. else die and okay. no cameras? Again? All right. Did I hear that? Yes. Oh my God. John Dude. Luke Brunel. Dude. Okay. So John Luke Brunel, who was convicted to, or excuse me, was ties to Jeffrey Epstein. Who they were going to try for, you know, sexually assaulting young girls and all that stuff. He was in a cell, in one of those cells, protected or whatever, hung himself. The cameras turned off. The security guards weren't watching. How can how can why they- why can't why can't we get okay? We started this podcast up, you know, targeting the the woke, you know, yeah, you know, division of people like. Where the fuck are you at on this stuff? Yeah, yeah. like where are you not like raising yeah. hell, Why? protesting for you? This has to be the most obvious. Like this is corrupt. Obviously, corrupt. Some shit's going down. Privilege, anything the bullshit we've ever about, seen in our lives. This is definitely and something. Not, like no attention around it. Yeah, in a French jail cell. Like the cameras were off. Security guards weren't there, and he just was found hanging. Bro, himself. how powerful was this dude? If people well, are like. Not just, how powerful he had it was. dirt on how, the yeah. most powerful people. That's yeah. it. What kind that's of what, and that. that's what I mean by that. Yeah. Like he 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 was such a powerful person that the dude has long been gone and dead now, and people still be dying because of him. Dude, like, so that's crazy. So the article I read was uh, what's her name? Just saying, just saying. Yeah, Gis- Gis- Maxwell. Gislaine. 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 There, we'll say, say it wrong. Yeah, get, so, get, you'll get him upset with Tom Brady's wife. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> yeah, no. she, her family is worried for her life because <laughs> they keep moving her. Into different cells, and they're like, you know, she she doesn't want to kill herself. Like, they're making an out like, listen, yeah. she's not trying to commit you know suicide. What's, what's crazy wow. is that almost all these people that have dropped like this came out like weeks or months, like telling people, I don't want to kill myself, <laughs> I, and then they still die, and we still don't like. <laughs> it's yeah, so crazy. Happens, like, it's like, dude, it's how, just so frustrating. How, how how much more blatant could it be? You know yeah. what the problem is? It's because the people. Okay, if if we really follow the conspiracy theory thing to its whatever. The people who are going to be affected, they're the ones that control whether or not this get real deep investigation. So they're like, yeah, we'll just leave it alone. It reminds me of the, the, Eddie, <laughs> yeah. the Eddie Murphy skit when he when he talks about getting cheated or he cheats on his wife and gets caught. You know, wasn't me. Oh, just denial. Yeah, just keep denying. Just keep denying. Just, was it? Wasn't me. Didn't oh. happen. Didn't happen. I, Seems I, to be the move these days. I, I, eventually, people go like, maybe it didn't happen. I can't Ooh. believe it, dude. Anyway, I read a, a cool study on uh, cannabinoids. You guys ready for some nerd stuff? Yeah, let's yeah. Hear it. yeah. All right. So obviously, cannabinoids are the compounds found in hemp and in marijuana, and we now know there's lots and lots of potential health benefits and medical applications. Well, I looked up their anti-inflammatory effects on the body, right? And I found in studies that cannabinoids have a mild, m- minor in- anti-inflammatory effect. However, when you combine cannabinoids, it becomes very potent. So it's another thing that supports the what they call the entourage effect, right? So, for example, 
rather than just using CBD oil for inflammation or for anti-anxiety effects or to help you with sleep or whatever, you're better off using full something spectrum. that is full spectrum, that has all the cannabinoids of the plant in it, you'll get a better effect. This may be why, I, I actually, I know this is why, I've used a million and one CBD products, but Ned, which is one of our sponsors, right? Ned uses full spectrum hemp oil. I actually feel that. I don't feel when I go pure CBD. Well, I remember when we first, obviously, when we first were talking to them and when we have somebody that is, uh, you know, heavily science based or a new supplement or new anything like that, I always send it over towards Sal and, and had you talk to them and their team. And uh, I remember that was what you were most impressed with because at that time, obviously, it's, more people are aware of this now, and so you're seeing more and more full spectrum. But back then, yep. uh, full spectrum hemp oil was not the, the go to. It was, CBD, it was just, CBD. just pure CBD oil. CBD is what had the most attention, the most news, the most kind of studies that were out there. And so everybody jumped on that right away. But people that had been doing the research and had been in it much longer kind of knew the story and was like, full spectrum was the way to go, even though full spectrum hemp oil doesn't sell as well initially because people aren't aware. They're looking for CBD. They're looking for CBD. That was one of the things I knew that you were attracted to. And then here we are now, and I see that like everybody is now starting yeah, to move that direction. Just to give direction. people an example, like kind of break it down a little bit. Let's say you get a particular effect from 20 milligrams of CBD. If you do 10 milligrams of CBD and 10 milligrams of other naturally occurring cannabinoids, so total 20 milligrams, you get a much better effect than the, even though it's a milligram per milligram the same, the combination of multiple cannabinoids that are naturally found in the hemp plant. <laughs> is much more effective than just the CBD. So that's what you want. You want full spectrum if you're looking to derive those benefits that you, you know, maybe read about. Can you think of any other examples in this where we 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 extracted so, like something out of something found in nature and then later on find out that like the way it was found in nature is probably the, the well, best here's, way? Well, here's a silly example. Uh, fruit juice versus fruit. There's, a, there's an easy example. Oh, yeah. Squeeze out the fruit juice and you essentially have uh, natural soda, right? Natural soda drink. It effect, it's, got, it's just pure sugar. But if you eat fruit... It's not doesn't nearly have the effect on your body like fruit juice mm. because fruit contains fiber and the other you know components in fruit. That well, it's just always out. interesting if there's like some kind of poisonous like extract like the plant pr produces. Like a lot of times it produces the antidote as well. Oh, right? yeah, I've read that. It. Yeah, that's really cool. So, but yeah, there's lots of like uh, counter effects in, in uh, to to balance out the negative and the positive effects. Yeah, well, you know, like uh, green tea's got caffeine and theanine in it. So it's, it has naturally occurring theanine in it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, not a lot, but it's got some. So some people feel better with green tea caffeine, even if it's the same dose of caffeine they would get in coffee. And they think that that's probably one of the main reasons. Oh, that makes sense. Because I remember when you introduced that to us and we started using the-, the I never have caffeine without theanine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just way, it's way it better. Does, yeah, it's it way smoother, it less of a drop, no jittery out of it. No, I, I'm like all about it. I mean, yeah, I know totally. we always keep a bottle there, but now you see more and more products though that actually have it paired. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's starting. To, it's starting to become a thing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. I so I go uh, uh, two to one ratio. So uh, if I have a hundred milligrams of caffeine, I like two hundred milligrams of theanine. If it's two hundred milligrams of caffeine, four hundred milligrams of theanine. Most companies will go one to one, but I found that a, a two to one ratio theanine to caffeine to be the absolute best. So if anyone wants to mess around with it, if you have your coffee in the morning, figure out how much caffeine's in there, and go two times with theanine. Take it at the same time. A little bit of CBD. Oh well, now you're talking. Yo, yeah. do the do the Ned. Remember that oh my stack? God. We used to do Bro. that. Ned, I would done that in a while. Theming. We used yeah. to do that. Actually, I should bring that. That is back. fire. I just, yeah, I, I remember drinking. You showed me that. I remember That's like super the, relaxed mode. You're That's like, like relaxed, relaxed with nitro and you're alert. Like it down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I do like that. It's a, a very creative. I it's been a while since we've done. Well, you know, when we first started working with Ned, we were doing that. We were experimenting all the different ways to use it. Let's make with our caffeine. Let's add some theanine. That would work though. Like it is. All right. Speaking of our sponsors, and I looked up some of the ingredients in um the the good serum from Caldera. Really interesting. You want you want to, you want to hear some cool stuff? Yeah. Okay, so here's some of the ing ingredients in the their serum, their oil, and we always rave about how good it is. And by the way, it's blowing. Do you guys see how how much they're well, you know, cuz you're always in contact with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 
their repurchase rate is incredible. Well, their reviews are crazy. If you see their reviews online, their reviews are like 4.5. Anytime you see like, mm -hmm. I mean, a four review and above is, is pretty standard. It's like yeah. what would be considered really good reviews. You hit like a 4.5 review. It's yeah. really, really well, stellar. If, you, if you've looked through, I've seen some pictures of transformation of skin pictures. It's pretty, pretty dramatic. Yeah. yeah, so here's some stuff. So, they have, so one of the compounds in there is spilanthus, which act as a natural form of Botox. Reduces oh, wow. the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, improves poor appearance, and it balances oil levels in the skin. Then there's an, a compound in there called Huang Qi, or Astragalus uh, propincus, and it helps skin elasticity, tone, and texture. Prickly pear stimulates collagen generation. Tocopherol, which is in uh, other things too, but that helps reduce UV damage. And then fireweed, which contains antioxidants that fight environmental stressors. So it's got these really, really good ingredients that you know, which I, I mean, I've never used anything on my face ever consistently. So it's oh, one of the reasons why it works so good. Very cool. Hey, look, life is too short to be suffering from digestive issues. If you have digestive issues from eating a lot of protein, carbohydrates, and fats, you're trying to build your body, but your gut won't work with you, try Mastzymes. These are digestive enzymes designed for people like us, people who are fitness minded. Take some digestive enzymes from Mastzymes with your meal improve your digestion, okay? Go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on Bio Optimizers, that's where you'll get this particular product, and you'll find Masszymes and many other products. By the way, you can use the code MINDPUMP10 for 10% off your order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Marie from Missouri. Hey, Marie, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, it's really nice to meet you guys. I've been uh, listening to you guys for uh, quite some time in late December, so it's kind of exciting to... Uh Finally get to meet you guys. Cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so my question is, um, after massive weight loss and maintaining a uh, weight for several months, when is it optimal to go into another cut to lose the last, uh, 20 ish pounds? I kind of want to give you guys a backstory. Um, I'm 32, uh, a four or five, five, four and a half female who lost approximately 95 pounds naturally in about a year and four months. I struggled with weight all my life uh, throughout my childhood and as an adult because of the lack of knowledge around nutrition and fitness. Uh, I lost weight in the past so I could join the military, but I gained it back once I got out because it wasn't sustainable. Uh, I wasn't focused on the uh, long-term approach. It was just a short-term goal, goal being that I wanted to get in the military and that meant getting down to a certain weight. Uh, I started my weight loss journey in March of 2020, once again at my heaviest weight at 250, 250 pounds. This time around, I focused on taking the long-term approach by listening to you guys, uh, Lane Norton and Jordan Syatt. I also researched studies on people who maintain weight loss and methods they use to keep the weight off. Uh, one study uh, I read during my weight loss journey was the National Weight Control Registry. And uh, I uh, later in my weight loss journey, I made it a goal to join. Uh, not long ago, I received the application from them to join the registry and since uh, applied. Uh, however, towards the beginning of my journey, I did start to take the wrong approach to, uh, to my fitness um, uh, weight loss journey by cutting my calories to like 1,200 and just walking. So I didn't know uh, what my maintenance calories were exactly at 250 pounds. But I did later increase my intake and started strength training as I learned the error of my ways. I focused on learning the nutritional value of food in order to properly fuel my body, uh, learn to listen to my body's hunger signals, digestive signals, and how to respond to certain foods. I tracked my caloric intake and my activity expenditure and weight daily on Excel spreadsheet in order to, uh, to get an average. However, I only use the information as a tool to know that I am staying on track. Uh, I eventually hired a certified personal trainer after maintaining a weight loss of 80 pounds for a couple months at 2,500 calories. Uh, he helped me lose 15 pounds. With his guidance, I was able to successfully reverse after my cut. Uh, when I ended my cut in July in 2020, uh, 2021, I was the same weight I am now, about 155 pounds and roughly 27% body fat. Uh, maintenance calories were 2,300. Over the last seven months, I've been able to maintain my current weight lose body fat now, I'm at 22%, and my maintenance calories are 2,600. I currently train four to five days a week, and I want to get down to 15% body fat, about, 145, uh, about 140 pounds. Uh, although weight isn't really my concern, it is really my body fat percentage. My coach says he we could do a cut in April because um, he wanted me to maintain for a while, which I agreed. Uh, 
And I'm wondering if I should wait a year before attempting another cut. And if so, what is y'all's take on it? Are you are you looking for a job or you want help? What is it? I feel like you're qualified enough to yeah. come over here and work with us, man. I think you're doing uh, incredible. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're, you're on track. You're, 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 on, you're, oh, you're phenomenal. Twenty two percent body fat, twenty six hundred maintenance calories on a five four and a half woman is incredible. Yeah, you, now you can cut based off the numbers. The only thing I would I would caution you on would be the, the any of the any mental or psychological uh, challenges you may have with this whole process. Because as far as calories are concerned, as far as what you're doing with your workouts, your body fat percentage, that's all good. The only thing, and I'm not saying this is you, okay? So I'm just saying this is something you want to ask yourself. Uh, because you've gone through this process, you've got a spreadsheet, you're counting everything. If you feel like you're maybe on the side of a little bit too neurotic or too stressed out about everything, then you might want to wait a little longer. But if you, that's not an issue, then everything else looks good. Yeah, I would say I, go for the cut. Based off of what you're, what I'm reading and what you just shared, um, I think you're in an incredibly healthy place to do whatever the hell you want. Um, I think you could maintain and, and and be a completely healthy, strong, and fit and in a great, great place. If you want to get shredded and you want to get lean, I think you're in a very healthy place calorie-wise to cut calories. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess the only thing I would just caution you as you do that, is, and it sounds like you've already done this, though, uh, is to you know not dramatically cut the calories to like twelve hundred or something ridiculous. You just barely got to cut down a little bit, create a little bit more movement, and uh, maybe change up some programming or increase intensity or volume. And I think you're in a phenomenal place to do whatever now, the hell you want. Now fifteen percent is pretty lean for a woman. It's really lean. why do you want to get down to fifteen percent? I kind of want to see how far I could take my body, like where my body's not fighting me. Um, but I also want to try to compete in a bodybuilding show later on. And I want to be like, you know, as lean as I can, but then when I diet down to a show, it's not going to be like, you know, a drastic cut. Love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this, Marie, uh, cause mentality. you said you, you struggled with weight as a kid and stuff growing up. Do, do you, do you work, do you have any body image issues or do you have any issues with, you know, uh, fears of gaining the weight back or any body dysmorphia? Uh, at first I did have fear of like gaining the weight back. Um, I, I honestly thought when I was reversing that I was going to like try to cut my calories and like stay low calorie, but I had to really work through my mindset of that. You know, I, I had the tools I learned and you know, that I could, I have, I'm, like I can maintain it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Cause, cause competing in bodybuilding that if you have any, any body dysmorphia, it's going to blow it way up. I don't care who you are. If you have any issues with that at all, it's going to make it uh, much bigger. So prepare yourself for that. And that. That's the only thing. That's the only honest to God because everything else is done. You're so good. Your metabolism looks good. Everything looks good. That would be the only thing con to consider. But don't just think it's a small thing. If that's some, if if you got, if you're on, and you don't have to tell us on the show, but if you're honest with yourself, you're like oh, you know what, that might not be good for me to stand on stage and get judged by how I look and go through that whole process, and that might take me ten steps back psychologically or mentally. Then I said I would say don't do it. Uh, I, but if there's no issues there, then everything else looks good. I mean, I know we've only known each other for about three minutes, but I feel like from just listening to you tell your story and the the things that you've overcome, and I, I think you have the absolute right mindset. Uh, even the idea of you kind of pushing your body to getting leaner than you've ever been before you even decide to book a show, I think is smart. I think that um, you should do that. And I think you're at a great place calorie wise. I think you understand the value of tracking, but also not becoming uh, addicted to that. Uh, yeah. You, you sound from what, from what I'm hearing right now as a, a perfect person to play with this and, and, yeah. and go for it. And I think it's a, a, a total fine goal. I think you're, I, I love people that I think are in a good place to do this. So you learn a lot about your body, uh, taking it to an extreme level of leanness. And I think that there's, there is tremendous value for the right person to do that. And you sound very qualified to do that. Yeah, and I'm not going to, I'm going to play devil's advocate. All right, Marie. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> are, you, are you an are you an analytical person? Do you do you, do you are you a numbers person and a follow you know systems and organized type things type of person? Yeah, it's funny you say that. Yeah, I am. I in the government in the military, I used to do budgets and stuff like that. So okay. spreadsheets. <laughs> okay. Now, now here's Very, yeah. I could tell. So now here's why. Here's here's where I'm going to play devil's advocate. Sometimes you get people like you who the way that they handle their issues is they dive deep into the numbers and the statistics and they just follow them. Now, there's nothing 
inherently wrong with that, but what it does do is it takes the other issues that you might not be addressing and it buries them and they can resurface. So I know I sound like a, you know, like I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm the turd in the punch bowl here, but what I'm trying to say basically is what I'm saying, I want you to consider very strongly because uh, I've seen this happen before where someone's in a great place, then they go do a show and it sets them back really bad. So consider that. Okay. So and this, I can't answer this for you. This is something you have to be very honest with yourself. And if you have a tendency to you know, either hide or escape into the numbers and just be a numbers person like a robot, that eventually will not work. Eventually it'll come out. So just consider that, okay? Now, as far as workouts are concerned, um, you're, I mean, MAPS aesthetic would be wonderful for you, I, I would think. Do you follow any of our programs? Actually, I want to. Um, I Right now, I actually do the same training program as my husband. He's actually going to go into a show in April. Cool. Um, so I've been following, even though my the coach, because I use my coach for nutrition, really, um, even though he does suggest, you know, we do different workouts or whatever, but I do do the ones, but I modified some things, you know, to my own body. Um, but yeah, I did look into your guys' programs because it was something me and him kind of wanted to do after uh, his show. Oh, cool. Well, I'll send you Maps Aesthetic. I think that would be great for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much, guys. I do really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Well, so, I mean, she's doing she's she's doing everything right. Yeah. The, the reason why I'm, I'm like again, I was so cautious and being the downer on this whole thing <laughs> is because no, uh, it's fair. I think it's yeah. a fair it, assessment. It, yeah, because she, I mean, she's a couple things she said early on, which is I dealt with this growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. You don't erase that because you follow a plan and you follow it right, and you don't necessarily erase that. And we and I've worked with people like this before where they hide and escape into the numbers yeah. and uh that doesn't mean that you know what i'm saying isn't an issue and so and then they can it can come out and rear its ugly head sometimes and it sometimes looks like i'm in and i'm on and i'm following the numbers and i'm off i'm not doing anything at all so that's why i want to caution and i'm always going to be cautionary with people who yeah. lose weight and then want to do a show it's like ooh, that's that's always tough for me well, you know? especially if they've never done it before yeah and yeah like having like mentally preparing yourself for that going into it i think is great but yeah her mentality just seems like it's on on point oh, and, yeah. and to be able to get to a place where you challenge your body you know i think it's a healthy thing to pursue but again that specific sport there's just a lot there that it's gonna you know bring up and expose yeah, but i mean 2600 calories oh her man height and body she's, fat a, she's yeah. doing great no she's uh, i mean i think you're right i think that sometimes we're the we're the best at selling ourselves yeah, totally right, on like how good i am and how recovered and yeah. i don't have any issues right so i, I definitely uh, agree with that caution right to but everything she did say, you know, so whether she's just she's doing, doing the right stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she's done. I mean, she even I don't know if you heard her when she went on her little spiel, but she even talked about how she's, you know, she tracked just for using that as a thing to to look back at. But she's primarily been intuitively eating yeah, and wasn't stuck there. Yeah. Trying to listen to her body. And and, and so yeah. she's done these uh, cuts and bulks and cuts and bulks and reverse dieted, got her up to a place at yeah. twenty six hundred calories. Oh, yeah. She's definitely 20, following the playbook. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think that. um uh, I think she would be a, she would be a fun client to to take to this uh, to take to this level and, and see how she does and uh, I mean I like where she's at. Not many girls that want to get on stage and compete that I've ever met that are as small as she is five four and eating twenty six hundred calories and it that's she's at the place I would always want to take my clients before I would yeah. allow them to get on stage is, you know, many of the ones that would hire me would be at the 1500 calorie, 1700 calorie yeah. mark. And then they, and they have body fat to lose. And they're like, yeah, I want to get ready for a show. And I'm like, well, probably not a good idea for you, but yeah, I like where she's at. And I, I think it'd be interesting to see how she does over the next year. Our next caller is Michael from Maryland. What's up, Michael? How can we help you? Oh, uh, how's it going guys? Um, so I feel like I'm behind enemy lines right now. Cause my question is about CrossFit. Um, I'm, um, an avid CrossFitter, but I do it more for, um, the sport and the enjoyment of it. Um, I like to do lo uh, local competitions and listening to you guys. I realize that it's not always the best if your goal is, you know, building strength or aesthetics. And I've been trying to implement some of that with, um, resistance training, but I find myself like when I focus just on resistance training, I usually uh, end up lacking in, in power. I'll get stronger, but my overall power output will be lower. Um, I also have like um, FOMO. Like I'll see a workout, really want to do it. And then 
um, that'll kind of accumulate. Um, so I'm trying to find like a good way to uh, blend the two. And so my question to you guys is if you guys had a client come in and want to do um, training, but for the purposes of getting better at the sport of CrossFit, how would you guys do it? I would send them to another trainer. No, I'm just kidding. With you. <laughs> I feel like we need counseling. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how did you get through? This is weird. No, okay. So here's the deal. You want to get better at CrossFit? You know what you got to do more of? CrossFit. CrossFit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very specific type of sport. Now, you want to increase power? I would practice Olympic lifting. I would train and practice Olympic lifting. And depending on how much CrossFit you do, that'll determine how much Olympic lifting specific type training you could do. You could always try plyos and explosive movements. But I would focus on the Olympic lifts because that's usually where you need to express the power in CrossFit competitions is, is those types of lifts. So really nothing's going to get you better at, at competing at CrossFit like CrossFit. The only thing I would add that would benefit your ability to compete in CrossFit would be mobility work. Mm -hmm. I, it would be you know correctional exercise 100%. and mobility work. That would be like the majority of what I would recommend. Uh, and, and actually, we were talking with CrossFit gyms about you know incorporating MAPS Prime. Uh, you know, beforehand, before doing even any of the wads that they had scheduled out. And I think it would be very beneficial to, um, you know, incorporate that. But, you know, for the most part, like what, what you're describing, if you really focus on this as a sport, which I, I actually appreciate the fact that you recognize that um, and that's your mentality towards it, you got to you got to benefit your body and, and build your body and train your body for the sport. So it's it's different than these workouts that you're doing uh, CrossFit wise in in the gym with everybody. So to slow down and really you know take those rest periods and and allow your body to uh, you know really generate more force and really focus on that specifically, uh, and then and then add all these mobility movements in there to to benefit your joints while you're putting this extreme stress on your joints is going to be paramount. I mean. This is. I'm glad we we got a question like this. It's been a minute since we've done a, a CrossFit question, and I feel like we always have to start this. Uh, this anytime we have a question related to CrossFit, we have to start with this. We're not against CrossFit. Like if I have a client who's young and healthy, and they they like to CrossFit train, they love to CrossFit train, then I'm so for it. And if they came to me as as a, a client and said, Adam, I want to get better at it, then I'm going to encourage them to do more CrossFit to get better at it. But what ends up happening, and I and Mike, you do sound a little bit like this, where my client isn't sure exactly what they want. They say like, "Oh, I love doing CrossFit, but I want to be strong and I want to be ripped and I want to jump higher." And they have they have all these other specific goals. Yet and yet, and they also like CrossFit, and it's they are they are not one in themselves. It's like CrossFit is a sport in itself. And so if you really love that, let's fucking get good at it and let's focus on being good at it and do things like mobility to complement it, focus on eating correctly and recovering and practicing the different wads and it, let's, let's get good at that stuff. But if you come to me and you're like, oh, my number one concern is like, you know, I'm losing my strength or I'm not strong or I want to look a certain way, then I'm going to challenge the way that we're going at it. So I think the answer to this is, is within yourself. I think you know better than anybody or you should know better than anybody what you should do here and you, you but you first have to decide what is it that you really want from all this i think we we get caught up in this idea that you we love crossfit but then we're doing all these things that don't don't necessarily benefit it the most so, do you said power where specifically do you want more power so like, i find myself like in um like the metcons if it's like a bunch of power cleans for time, it'll be something that's like maybe 50% of my one rep max, but I just can't seem to cycle it. Mm, um, I'll okay. get winded pretty quickly. That's not power you're talking about then. That's, yeah, that's strength yeah, stamina. Right. Yeah. So it, it, you're, you're, Build you're, up your work capacity. Yeah. That's work capacity. You're just going to have to practice doing that. Yeah. More CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, and if you wanted better power, I would like point you in the direction of someone like Sonny Webster's programming, which is around Olympic lifts and go follow his programming because it's incredible if you want to get incredible power yeah. and get good at the specific Olympic lifts. But what you're explaining is CrossFit programming. Can I do a complex movement a bunch of times over and over and over and, over and I'm not very good at it? Yeah. Well, the best thing that's going to make you good at it is doing well, more of First of all, you got to be very proficient in that movement so that way it doesn't feel like your body's wasting energy. 
doing it right so as you go through that and you're cycling that um you know being being the best at the technique wise and being able to master that is going to help you tremendously but then you Good have point. to then you have to really get through all those reps and just keep cycling it through those types of workouts to build the endurance so it's kind of like you know a combination of the both yeah you know justin makes a good point um if it's if if i, I would do an olympic lifting course where you're really perfecting the technique. Yeah, Sonny Webster stuff. Because better technique is going to make you waste less energy. And then do the more do the CrossFit workouts for the stamina aspect of it. That, that's a great that's a great uh, way to go. There you go. The only okay. thing I caution about that is the the volume of training. That you I, I know. You know, no, I don't scale mean, back on. I don't something. mean workout. Yeah, we're not going to talk about. Yeah, I don't mean workout <laughs> cross. Uh, yeah. you know, Olympic lifting. But if that's good for you or not, practice it's a sport. it like yeah, the technique yeah. and the skill, right? Because it's so technical. Uh, I actually did something like, like similar to that um, for the last couple of years where like um, two days a week, one day I'd focus just on the snatch and then one day a week I would focus just on the clean and jerk. Mm -hmm. And then I would do a couple Metcons throughout the week. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel? Um, I felt pretty good. Um, but then I, I also thought I was spending too much time focusing on uh, the Olympic lifts to where like, I didn't feel like I was progressing with the performance side of on crossfit as a sport and that's why i like yeah. scaled that back hmm. you know what the challenge is with the crossfit as a sport is there's so much in it that if you do more specific training for one aspect mm -hmm. you're probably going to see something else uh that's why the, that's down. why the greats in the sport you ever see how they train rich froning and so i mean they're training yeah. three times a day yeah mm -hmm. well Just I doing, mean, if you could if, if your body can handle well that, i know right? yeah. well let's we're, we're not having a conversation well, around about handling stress listen well. exactly we're not having a conversation right now about what is the best way of training for being healthy in shape or power or strength we're talking to somebody who wants to be good at crossfit you want to be good at crossfit do more of it yeah yeah I mean, that's, I expect the unexpected almost yeah 100 percent. i mean that it's just like if someone came to me and said they want to be good at basketball and what can they do well you know we play basketball more yep, that is yep. the best thing yes there's some things we can do within our weight training and stuff like that to but it ain't going to be as good as playing basketball yeah, absolutely yeah michael do you have uh maps prime pro because i think there'll be some good mobility stuff in there for you um, no, I don't. All right, we'll send that over to you, okay? All right, thank you. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, guys, so much. Yeah, uh, I really luck, appreciate buddy. it. No, Thanks, you Mike. got it, brother. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's one of those, like, I want everything, you know, questions. It's also one of those things where I, I, I just, this is the part I think that I get, you know, riled up about CrossFit stuff or CrossFit people is they've drank the Kool-Aid so much that they, they think it's what they want. And it's like, but everything they're saying is not yeah. that. It's mm -hmm. like, you, you know, they start off with like, I love CrossFit and I want to get good at CrossFit. They're like, but then I really want to work on my abs. And then I really want, you know, yeah. I want to get better at this movement. And I really want, and it's like, okay, well then. It's that, the next shiny thing. It, all Always. And yeah. that, that's what that's what drives me crazy. Because like, if, if you were to identify something like very specific, like he had mentioned uh, with, uh, you know, doing that lift and doing it in cycles, like you got to focus, hyper focus on that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. now it's like you're taking all your focus away from the, you know, tens of hundreds of other lifts that they just randomly throw in there. So yep. it's, it's hard to really prescribe other than to say like they've created wads. You need to keep running through those wads as best you can if you want to get it just yeah, yeah yeah and and you know what replace you did it, you you did this earlier replace the word crossfit with any other sport i want to get really good at soccer but i want to have big lats yeah or i want to get really good at basketball but want to be i want to be four percent body fat like yeah. okay there's gonna be some give give and take that's here. right but if you really want to get good at basketball forget the other stuff and just get good at basketball. And, and that's why i feel like the the answer for a lot of these people that are that fall in a category like this is it has more to do with you digging inside and really asking yourself what is it that you truly want and and to, to get away from all the kool-aid you drink because you've been they've been sold on this idea that it's so amazing. And it's like, listen, and I'm not against it. If I got a client who's healthy in shape, they love doing CrossFit every week. I'm not going to discourage them from doing that, mm -hmm. especially if they enjoy it. But if you come to me as a professional and say, Adam, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z. And, and if X, Y, and Z, if I don't think that doing CrossFit is the best way, or you want to know the best way to get to X, Y, or Z, I'm going to tell you that. And CrossFit is not that. CrossFit is great at getting good at CrossFit. Yeah. And if you love doing it and it keeps you in shape and healthy and mobile and strong and powerful, and fucking on. do it. Right. Do it yeah. and stay doing it. And I'm all for it. But 
Don't come to me and say you got these different, these all these specific goals, and then you're like, oh, but I also want to want to do CrossFit. It's like, well, okay, well, that's fine, and you can get good at it, but you're probably going to sacrifice a little bit some of these things that you want, or totally. or understand that's not the best way to get there. Totally. Our next caller is Clint from Iowa. What's up, Clint? How can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? First off, I'd like to thank you for everything you guys do, but mostly Justin because I want to be listening to you guys without him going on tinfoil hat. Uh, <laughs> All right, I got a convert. <laughs> that's right. Uh, first off, my thing is like with my job, I do fairly physical labor. I walk a lot for it. I just started your OCR program, and I'm just trying to figure out what the proper caloric intake I should be in to really thrive in that. Okay, that's gonna. We're gonna need more information than that for sure. Where are you at calorie wise right now? Uh, like right what? now, I'm about 215 pounds. I'm sitting right around 2,500 to 2,600 calories, about 200 grams of protein a day. For okay. my job, like I probably walk anywhere from five to ten miles and move 15 to 30 thousand pounds of stuff throughout the day. Okay, and then what's the what's the primary goal? Like, what are we trying to lean out? Or we just want to get fit? Are we trying to get stronger? Or like, what's our primary goal? Um, obviously, I could lean out a little bit, but mostly I just want to, like I said, I'm doing the OCR program. I'm about ready to start the first phase, and I just want to get as best at that as I possibly can. Honestly, dude, it's it, the answer is a lot simpler than we think. I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out too much or stress too much. I should say about what exactly you should go from here. I would start the programming, yeah. and if you find your appetite is increasing, eat more, eat, eat, eat more. more, and feed your, feed Fair yourself. Enough. Yeah, but don't eat like an asshole. Like if you feel hungry, don't go from twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred calories. Go from yeah. twenty five hundred to twenty seven hundred or twenty eight hundred, and see how you feel. If you still feel hungry, increase it. Especially if you see performance going up and you're maintaining your weight where you like to be, and you're getting stronger. But uh, you're, you're at a, you're, your body's probably pretty adapted to your your daily routine, even though it's a, a lot. Sounds. What, what do you do, by the way? That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of moving and lifting. What are yeah. you doing? Uh, I'm a delivery driver for okay, okay. like a company you would have out there would be like Cisco. Oh, okay. But it's a company like that back here in Iowa. And I'm assuming you've been doing this for a long time or quite a while. Uh, yeah, like 12 years. Oh yeah. So yeah. your your body is is pretty much adapted to that. So it's it's basically doing that on almost on autopilot for you, even though it is okay. labor intensive and you should uh, pay attention to how you feel. But you're probably pretty adapted to that based off of your calorie intake and everything else. So yeah, I would start the programming and uh, just pay attention to how your appetite feels and if you start to feel like you're hungrier that more than usual, which might happen because you're gonna be doing a lot of movements that are different. Um, so feel free to feed yourself. And just, you know, give yourself a few hundred calories extra and see how you feel from there. And then just slowly increase if, if you need to. Or keep it where you're at and then you lean out. You might not get uh, as much performance by not increasing the calories, but then you're going to get leaner. So based off of what you want more of is where I would guide you if you were my client. I'd say you okay. would, we would kind of check in every week and or every other week and go, Clint, how you doing? And you're like... Man, Adam, I'm hungry like crazy, but boy, I tell you what, I'm leaning out. I kind of like the way I look and feel, and I know I could probably be a little bit stronger this, but I like where I, okay, we're going to keep it there. If you go, Adam, like, man, I, I just, I feel fatigued and tired, and I just don't have an energy, and I'm hungry all day long. Well, fuck, let's feed then, Clint. Let's give yourself more calories. Um, and that's how we would go. And we just kind of base it off of how you're feeling going through uh, OCR and what we're seeing performance wise. And if you like what you're seeing that's happening to your body. Yeah, there's not much to add. I mean, your metrics are going to be okay. your, your performance and your appetite. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so at, okay. so how, how you're eating, if your performance improves with more calories, then you're going good. Um, and that's pretty much 200 grams of protein with 2500 calories. You, you, are, are your carbohydrates where are your carbohydrates at? Uh, that I don't pay attention to as much because I try to do a majority of protein. Yeah. You might want more carbs while you're doing OCR. Okay. But, you know, fill it out. Some people do okay, mm -hmm. but you might find that you need a little bit more carbs um, to give you more fuel for OCR type training. But uh, I mean, basically Adam covered it all. Yeah, I'm curious too. So you've ran a few of these before, and are you like trying to get more competitive uh, in terms of like your your numbers and your time? Yeah, for the most part, like the guys I run them with are, are are all extremely younger and like wrestling type bodies, like very in shape. And so like mm -hmm. I'm competitive with them. Okay. What was your um, strengths and weaknesses, uh, you know, with obstacles? 
Uh, for the most part, it's just the endurance of doing. Like the last one I did was as a Spartan Beast, and just the endurance of that thirteen miles or whatever it was. Uh-huh. So the, OC- my ass. the OCR program is going to be great because yeah. we that. build in the running in yeah. there, so that'll be great. Yeah, it's it was really built off of you know thinking about Spartan races. I mean, that's what we worked with Amelia Boone on that one. So. Um, yeah, follow the program as laid out. Uh, let let your appetite and performance drive what you do with your calories. Um, and I really wouldn't adjust anything too much from here. Just kind of go go kind of biweekly check ins with yourself on how you're feeling yeah. and what you like. And show those young kids what time it is. That's right. Go look yeah, some, keep right. us keep us updated, man. I want to <laughs> yeah. know how you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and second part, uh, since I work this job, I start work at eleven o'clock at night. And so my sleep time is during the day. Any tips to try to set that routine when some days I'll work 14 hours, some days I'll work eight. So it's hard to get into that routine of getting X amount of hours throughout the week. And then I get to the weekend and then I have to rechange my entire schedule so I can see my wife and friends and whatnot. Oh, oh that's right. Man. Man. Yeah, yeah, swing shift. For it. <laughs> my where, wife, my yeah. wife used to work like Wear that. really strong blue light blocking glasses uh, about an hour and a half or two hours before you want to fall asleep, so that'll help. Okay. You can use red light therapy or sauna um, as a way to help recalibrate, recalibrate yeah. on the days that you're switching your schedule. And then okay. I would use melatonin a few days a week um, on the nights that you you know is going to be a little difficult for you. I would use like one milligram. Any more than that, it's probably not going to be beneficial, but one milligram extended release. And I would take that about an hour before with the blue light blocking classes before you go to bed. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks for yeah, calling. Stay in. away from the lizard right, people. Thank you, guys. Keep right. up the good work. No problem, right, man. Right, thank man. you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, pretty straightforward, right? Uh, when it comes to OCR type training, you have to train specifically for it, I guess, to perform the best. And then when it comes to food and performance, you just got to gauge your performance based off of your intake. It's I think very it's an, individual. I too. think you need more carbs. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I think, think you're right with that. Yeah, with that assessment, I, I could see that like being a thing. Like if you start to incorporate it and find out how how, how much more energy that's going to provide him throughout the endurance, I think that'll I, be something to consider. I like this question though because we, it gives it gave us an opportunity, which I don't feel like we've done anytime recently, where you know you have people getting ready to start. Uh, towards a plan and they want to lay out like everything like you know what should i do have it all dialed in and right. i would never coach somebody that way because i don't know i don't even know i mean even if i have a good guess at where your calorie should be That's like right. uh, so so honestly if he's already got an idea of where his maintenance like i'm not going to adjust anything i'm gonna say let's yeah. just start this thing and then then based off your see the feedback yeah based yeah. off of your feedback yeah. is how i'm going to either increase decrease stay the same cut back maybe on some of the volume of training because now you're mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Telling me like what's going on with your sleep because that brought in a new variable, right? The fact that he's swing shift and maybe oh, he yeah. has yep. rough weeks. Like I'm gonna adjust like his programming for that week and lay off maybe the training a tiny bit if he had a really stressful week sleep wise. And so, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna plan for any of that until it, it starts to you know reveal itself in our training program and then adjust accordingly. And I think that, I think that's the, sometimes people want you to tell, like how, how often you guys get this question where someone's like, Oh, I'm fine. I'm following maps aesthetic. What, what should my calorie intake be? Or what should I, uh, you know, should I go in a cut or should I go in a bulk? Yeah, it's we like, need information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Follow the programming and then let's, let's see how your body is responding. And then based off of your goals and how your body is responding, then we can make the, the correct adjustments to your nutrition. Our next caller is Pete from North Carolina. What's up, Pete? How can we help you? How are you guys doing? Good, man. All right. Um, first of all, again, I do want to thank every thank you guys for everything um, that you provide. Uh, just to give you a little background. And I am 62 years old. I am a former physique competitor. I got a diagnosis of non-small cell lung cancer in June, so I had to put all that stuff on the back burner. Uh, so just wanted to... Thank you guys again for talking about how talking about how food makes you feel because as a physique competitor, you always like measuring all the other stuff. And when I found out that diagnosis, I uh, yeah, started to go off the deep end a little bit, but started to reel it in a little bit because of a lot of the things that you guys have provided. So again, wanted to thank you for that. Appreciate you in remission. You're all good now, Pete. Um, I am taking a, an oral chemotherapy, uh, so I'll be on that for years. Okay. They tell me anyway. So okay. but we'll find out. It's a learning process. All right. 
No. Um, so my question is, you guys have mentioned a lot about using the weight sled, and I was just wondering what workouts for the weight sled would look like, uh, whether you would do it, let's say if you were doing MAPS anabolic, if you would do that on the trigger session days, would you alternate, you know, between like heavy and light sessions? Would you push for distance? Would you push for time? Uh, also, you know, if you had a recommendation as to what type of weight sled one might buy for their house. No, great question. Okay, Fun so, question. Yeah, yeah, so with MAPS Anabolic, here's how I would do it. I would do it on the trigger session days, and I would spend about 15 to 20 minutes pushing the sled. Wow, you would do trigger days. On huh? the other days, yeah. Well, this will be fun. We're going to be different. If you do it on the days, the foundational days, then I would do a couple sets, two or three, I guess, sets of the sled before you move into your squats. But otherwise, you can do them very frequently, and I would do, like I said, 15 to 20 minutes uh, on, on those trigger session days, and- what you want to focus on if you do it that way is technique, form, and connection. Um, so you'd be pushing it for 50 yards or so, and the goal is to get with a nice, deep, full full step, push all the way through, move to the next step, push all the way through, something along those lines. And the goal is really have good technique the entire time, a nice, consistent cadence. Um, and like I guess I'd keep it around 50 yards. If you want to go heavier, okay. you can go heavier with a shorter distance. But you want the intensity, if you do it in that way, I want the intensity to be about moderate. Okay, so the, the idea is you want to feel it a little bit, but really you're just trying to slowly get better at it, and little by little you can add uh, resistance to it. Sal, remind me, it, MAPS Anabolic is uh, back squats, front squats, deadlifts are the three, yeah. in front of the, the three, right? Yeah, 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 usually. So my... Uh, my recommendation will be a little bit different, and uh, none, neither one of these is right or wrong. It's just, I think, whatever you enjoy doing or what you're more like. So I have a tendency, still after all these years of training and knowing better and knowing my body, to, uh, especially when it comes to squatting and deadlifting, and uh, I, I overreach. I like to push the weight. I like to get after it. And uh, even though I know better, uh, I t and I tend to flirt with the overdoing it a little bit line a lot, and I love to use the sled when I do that. So, let's say it was a uh, you know back squat day, and I decided to put on probably more weight on the bar than I should have, or do an extra set, or you know do more reps than what's programmed, and and then the next day I'm feeling it. So when I hit the next workout where it's probably front squats and anabolic. I actually replace the front squats with driving the sled that day. Um, and then I can go a little more intense than what Sal's recommending. So yeah. Sal's recommending on trigger, which if I if I do on trigger days, that means I'm assuming that I'm training my legs the other three days a week. I'm probably going to do it uh, significantly light and easy, and it'd be more like speed work or like slow mobility driving the sled and it's more almost and I'm thinking like recovery. I'm not thinking about moving some mm -hmm. serious weight on sled. But if I use it in replace of a leg exercise in anabolic, I can actually kind of push the weight a little bit more and I can get away with pushing heavy weight and it doesn't quite do as much damage as say the front squat or the back squat will do it. So that's how I like to use it. And I, and I use it with any of our programs because uh, most of our programs have, you know, at least three days a week of leg training and I do train my legs pretty hard and I tend to overreach there. And when I do the next leg routine, I replace whatever leg exercise I had initially set up for now sled driving that day yeah so I've, I've done a bit of both and and um so in terms of the intense way that i've applied it and, and really try to build up work capacity something like you'd see in map strong um you know is a great fit to, to incorporate heavy sled pushes heavy sled drags uh and that's all you know within those those type of in-between workouts um and the work capacity sessions i should say um but in terms of like how i i use it frequently it's more like low to moderate intensity and that way i'm just building up a lot of volume so uh you know in between it's just such a it's such a valuable tool to uh so there's two different types of sleds i would recommend so there's one's more like a prowler sled where you have the handles where you can push 
Uh, and then there's also like a sled drag, uh, like a fat boy sled rogue provides for instance, uh, where you could actually like get a harness and then drag it backwards, drag it, you know, laterally. Uh, and you're able to get a lot of those types of stimulus and movement for your legs that you don't really get, uh, because you don't tend to train a lot in different planes of motion. So this is going to build up volume, uh, with that, which is going to get your secondary muscles, your stabilizing muscles to respond better, uh, with your lifts. And also it's very recuperative if you keep the intensity low, uh, to, to, to drive blood flow and to get, you know, that healing process to really, uh, uh, you know, accelerate. So that's pretty much how I use the, the the sleds. And now we didn't address. He asked um, as far as like the distance or whatever. So I, you know, I use like a if it's really really heavy and 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 I think of it like you're almost like you're doing like walking lunges. So if I'm doing like walking lunges, I'm going to do you know ten and ten on each leg. Mm -hmm. So whatever that distance is, I don't know. It's probably I go like forty yards. I say forty. Yeah, is about the gauge that I've tried to kind of prescribe. But yeah, it's it can vary depending on the space that you have, and um, you know, and you can kind of double that if you have to kind of go down twenty yards back, twenty yards back. You know, you can. Yeah, but but I think distance is probably more appropriate for this. Yeah, I mean, you're you're, you're look at you know the, the kind of forty yard mark. But what if you'll notice, and I've done it before, where I've counted, and it's like I'm basically doing you know twenty lunges. Right? Right. So it's like doing 10 and 10 on each side because you're obviously alternating as you push a sled. So I'd kind of keep it uh, on that if I, I'm going to do uh, and how I decide like the load is if I'm going to do like a shorter distance, just like say the 20 yards down and I want to go as heavy as I can. I'm going to go really heavy and I'm only going to go there. If I'm doing more recuperative work, like kind of Sal and Justin, I'm going to go a much lighter load and I'm going to go there and back. Right. So so that's kind of how I decide on the distance or how many reps I'm doing is based off how I'm using the tool. Am I using it more towards a recuperative day and get like a volume builder, kind of like what Sal and Justin, or if I'm replacing a leg day training session, which is how I use it more often, I'm going to load more and I'm not going to go as far as mm -hmm. distance. I'm going to really try and move some weight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem, well, Pete. Thanks for calling in. Right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, the sled is super versatile, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's actually, like a million and one different yeah, ways. Yeah, nobody was nobody was wrong, and there's it's a preference thing, really. Mm -hmm. I just lo I love using it uh, to be able to add volume and frequency, and not have a lot of Same. damage. I love, yeah. and I do do sometimes just my whole leg workout, and that's yeah. like what you do. Like if I feel overrun, yep, um, you know, like I overdid it, then I'll do that. But it's it's such a versatile tool. That, and you can do it so often if you do it right. You can do it so often to get yeah. great great gains from it. Yeah, yeah, it makes it fun. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find us all on social media. So Justin and Adam are on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, Adam at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 